Less the uh, San Jose earthquakes uh, did something they had not done since early June Saturday when they hosted Colorado the Quakes, earning a lead. But it would not last, unfortunately for them and their supporters. Ryan Johnson's opener from a Ramiro Corrales free kick cancelled out by Connor Casey's goal in the 70th. Casey getting on top of a San Jose defender and knocking the ball in, something upsetting Quakes boss Frank Yallop, who was ejected from the match for sharing his opinion and doing so uh, a little too aggressively, we shall say. So away goes the former Canada boss and his team ends up with a single point from the game as we continue to look at what happened in this contest. Bobby, great effort there from uh, Buna Kondul. Uh, San Jose uh, re-establishing itself in MLS this year. They're hoping one of the things that they can be is a tough team to play at home. They want to be at least strong at home and start getting some points. And I think that's why Frank Yallop was so upset because they hadn't been at home yep. for a long time. They had a lead and they weren't able to sew it up. Putting themselves in a position. Ryan Johnson, uh, who's uh, really uh, been a bit of a... Uh, a, let's call it a utility player mm -hmm. uh, this year, but uh, really doing a job for Frank Yallop in a lot of different positions, but holds off a challenge there, puts away a nice free kick, one these in-swinging ones from the, the opposite side. And as you point out, San Jose, and generally you look through the, 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 uh, the scores this year, and they generally have been pretty competitive. There's very few times, only a couple of occasions, they've really been out of the game, and they put themselves in a position where they could win it, and you can see there, you know, it's one of these, we were talking about this just off the air, and really, it's one of these cases, you'd argue if you're a forward that you just out-muscled the defender, but nine times out of ten, the referee is going to call that kind of situation. It looks like uh, Conor Casey made contact well before the ball uh, reached him, and so in that case, it's hard to see why it, the referee would allow that, uh, allow that uh, incident to stand. You know, it's interesting, so often we criticise players for going down too easily. But in a case like that, you wonder if the yeah. defender had then hit the deck. actually gone down earlier. If yeah, a whistle would, you know, if a whistle wouldn't have come quickly. And and that, 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 that is actually an, an excellent point, Mitch, because you see that time and time again. You know, players when not taking the option of going down, and they don't get the call. And then you're right, we criticise them when they go down too easily. But there again, if they, in many cases, if they don't tumble then they don't get the free kick. They, San Jose. They actually deserve in some cases. I'm sorry to interrupt. So. San Jose, but I've got something very important to say here. So you I'll, go ahead, I'm going to go on. San Jose, uh, working to try and fix what ails them right now. They're trying to get some offense going, and they signed Darren Hucker. We brought him over. Uh, Toronto FC had a discovery in on him, but the player has become San Jose property, as you likely have heard. It's in exchange for allocation money, as well as uh, Toronto FC getting an international player slot in this deal. Now, further to the addition of Hucker, San Jose adding Scott Seeley for allocation money from Kansas City on Monday as well. So they're working to try and improve that offense in the second half of the season and as they build depth in their player pool. Bobby Huckerby is an interesting choice for them, a player who seems more comfortable with the grass. He's made comments to that yeah. effect. What do you see from him coming into MLS? Well, it's interesting. He's, he's a player starting off, I uh, believe, Newcastle. He's with Newcastle, Coventry, Manchester City. Never quite made it at the Premiership level in terms of scoring goals. Scored tons of goals at the, the Championship level, the, the second level in England. And quite frankly, depending on what his injuries like, what his hips, hips actually like, there's a potential for him to be quite successful, I think. He was described once as playing like a runaway uh, speedboat. He, he's, he's all pace, he's all action, he plays with his head down a little bit, uh, perhaps too much, that's when the criticism come with him. But San Jose, if they can get anything out of him like his potential, um, then he could be a very exciting player for San Jose and together with Scott Seeley start scoring some goals and I think it's, it's in their first season the position they're in it would be unrealistic to think San Jose can really push for, a, right. for a, a, a playoff spot but there's no reason why perhaps they couldn't go something like 50, 50 down the road yeah. and uh, really give themselves a good platform uh, for next season. Mm -hmm. I read. I wonder also, really, I will have to save it for another day. If conditions, the uh, pitch, the turf at uh, Toronto is really a deterrent for players to uh, go and play there. If that's uh, something that they really consider. Well, I think what you're you're also working with is you're coming from some place, uh, a country that doesn't have artificial turf. Usually, used to playing on soft grass, mm -hmm. and there's a mindset. Um, it might not be the fact we don't know whether it's a detriment or not, but there's certainly a mindset in players coming from Europe that they don't want to play on artificial right. turf. And so when it comes down to it, anybody got any uh, injury concerns at all, I think they're always going to opt for the grass option. And uh, fans in Salt Lake City hoping for that new stadium soon.